This is the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about Hawkeye, Episode 5, Ronan. You must have some recommendations for me. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see, the High Line, High Line is great. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a Christmas market, Union Square, um, I'm not quite sure those are the right fit for the bloodthirsty vigilante type. <laughs> the bad bloodthirsty vigilante. <laughs> Sometimes you're funny, good bishop. Do you keep saying my whole name just to point out that you know it? Yes. I know a lot about you. Mother, Eleanor, lives on Park and 41st. Father, Derek, deceased. Very sad. And you recently walked into traffic to save a dog, which I'll admit is pretty cool, and you got a few points from me on that. Uh, university GPA, 3.8, senior, double major. Right, okay, we get it. Thank you. Are you in New York to talk to Clint? Is that why you're here? No, 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 no. I'm here to kill him. Welcome back, fellow Defenders. This is Defenders TV Podcast, and we're talking about Daredevil Season 4, Episode 1, Kingpin Returns. Okay, we're not. We're talking about Hawkeye, Episode 5, Ronan, and I'm one of your hosts, Derek. What? This is crazy. <laughs> I'm one of your other hosts, John. Welcome, fellow Defenders. Yes, we have the big K, and mm -hmm. um, it's not special K. Whether that's cereal or something else, it is the kingpin. Um, yes, great. Looking forward to chatting up all about this episode. Mm -hmm. Yes, we. It is true. We have the big man in white for what is essentially a glancing image. Yeah. Like I really thought, like <laughs> it's like everyone's like, "Oh, it's happening!" Ah! <laughs> and it was literally a photo. I'm like, "All right." Do you know what's? Cool. Do you know what's even worse about it being a photo? If you pause that photo, it's even less clear who it is. I've heard from a, a few people uh, that were trying to trying to work it out, but we will talk all about that in our spoiler filled discussion about Hawkeye okay, episode five. Ronan, of course, uh, the person who didn't introduce himself once again is Chris. <laughs> oh yes, hello, hello. <laughs> And welcome back, everybody. We've got a big week on TV Podcast Industries. I hope you're subscribed to the main feed on tvpodcastindustries.com or in any good or villainous podcast catcher. Uh, you can find us there. We've got a big week because we've got Hawkeye. We've got Wheel of Time, the penultimate episode of that show, episode seven. And we also have Spider-Man No Way Home. We did see it earlier on this week. All three of us got to go to the cinema together. I know. But we will not great. be spoiling it on this episode. We will be spoiling it, was emotional. it in our spoiler-filled podcast, even though it was emotional. Yes, John. Um, and was it but really was emotional because the three of us were in the same room together. That's what That's I true. meant. That's yeah, true. the movie wasn't emotional at all. <laughs> You're a <Yeah>. robot, John. <laughs> uh, but yes, we won't spoil it. But we do, as from one Spidey fan to all other, everyone Marvel fan and MCU fans, everyone... I strongly suggest going as soon as possible mm -hmm. to the cinema to see this film. Definitely. Uh, just so that you're not spoiled or to, or just become a hermit for Christmas and don't go on social media. <laughs> that is my strong suggestion. Yes, there you go. and those end credits as well. Oh, brilliant. Anyway, let us get into our spoiler-filled discussion of Episode 5 of Hawkeye, Ronin. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this episode was written by Jenna Noel. Fraser, uh, who is a former writer on The Romanoffs, and there's a first Marvel TV show that she's written. Uh, once again, the episode directed by Bert and Bertie, who've directed the last uh, last three episodes now. Yes. Excellent I'm stuff. assuming they'll be back for season two. I would presume so. Yeah, they might even be yes. back for next week uh, for the finale oh. of the series. I actually don't know who's directing that episode, so they may be back uh, for that episode. But John, do you want to tell us what they all gave us with your synopsis for Hawkeye Episode 5 running? Sure. In 2018, two Black Widows, Yelena and Sonya, attempt to deprogram Anna, a former Black Widow who is already free of her programming. But before Anna can recruit Yelena as a contract assassin, Yelena is snapped out of existence in her bathroom, only to return to the same spot just with different decor five years later. In the present, Kate Bishop returns to her mother's house after Clint Barton's refusal to allow her on his mission, and informs Eleanor about Jack Duquesne's Shell Corporation, 
leading to him being arrested. Kate heads back to her apartment to salvage her fire-damaged belongings, where she finds Elena and her dinner waiting. (laughs) Over box macaroni cheese, Elena questions Kate Bishop's loyalty to Clint after only knowing him for a week. After thanking Kate for her chat and evening together, she leaves with a warning not to get in the way of her contract to kill Clint Barton. Clint, in an attempt to protect his family, puts back on the Ronin suit and arranges a meeting with Maya Lopez at the auto shop where he killed her father. He takes out the tracksuit mafia and gets embroiled in a fight with Maya, but manages to incapacitate Maya before he unmasks himself to convince her to end her vendetta and stop pursuing his family. He also reveals that he was tipped off by an informant working for Maya's father's boss who wanted her father dead. Bishop returns to assist Barton against Maya and helps him escape. Lopez does not believe Barton at first, but later questions Kazi, who she suspects of knowing more information. The next day, over breakfast, Elena sends Kate a text that reveals that she was hired by her mother to kill Clint Barton, and that Eleanor is working with Maya's uncle, the Kingpin. <sighs> bum, bum, bum! I know! Hang uh, on a second. Do you mean Eleanor's a bad guy? The thing we've been saying since the beginning? Yeah, called it. <laughs> From episode one. Uh, yes, yes, but uh, lots of interesting reveals in this episode. And, and really some fun moments as well. We go into our top three arrow points for the episode. Absolutely. Yes. And I'm assuming the first one is, oh my God, they brought Batman into this universe. But no, we'll talk about that in, season, in part two. <laughs> <laughs> in season two, perhaps. Now, our arrow point number one is Yelena's return and meeting Kate. We saw, obviously, Yelena last episode, but this is a much more developed story of the return of Yelena Belova, a fantastic character uh, from Black Widow, and obviously much better used because she can actually talk in this episode. She actually gets lines, uh, and she's just (laughs) as funny as uh, as she was in Black Widow, uh, with a little harder edge to her, I think, um, that we see here. But Let's talk about that opening sequence because we go back to uh, 2018 um, to see her just after the movie Black Widow where she's going around the world trying to cure other Black Widows of uh, of the programming that was put into them. Um, I'm actually going to call this a pre-credit sequence because you could almost take it off the episode and put it at the end of Black Widow. Um, Did you you notice that when it ended, it then went into the... Previously on, Previously yeah. on. And Hawkeye and everything for the episodes. It, so. It's Christmas. It's pure indulgence. Mm. It's like the big Ferrero Rocher that you can get. <laughs> um, it's mm. pure indulgence at Christmas time. Be, um, it didn't need to be there, uh, but it was. Oh, yeah. And it was amazing. And that snap effect, along with the one from the, the previous Spider-Man, I think is really, really good. It was just so good. From... Uh, Far From Home, where all the band members suddenly turn up in the sports hall in in Spider-Man. And then this one was just great because it's five years gone. The 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 CGI with the deco all changing, mm-hmm. and yeah. her totally confused because for her it's five seconds. Yeah. I just that was just really really cool. I that thought was it was a good. great um, effect. It is really good, and obviously we've seen that this year in WandaVision. We've seen the return of Monica Rambeau, where she was sitting at the bedside of her mother in the hospital, and then five years later she pops back into existence after disappearing. Um, A much more crazy situation with Monica Rambeau because the hospital is completely overflowing with people and nobody knows what's going on. Here it's much more, um, much quieter scene. But still, Yelena, of course, is freaking out. She went, she went there to try and um, free someone that she thought was under mind control, go to the bathroom to wash her face, and then suddenly, five years later, she's in a family home with a family <laughs> standing there. Um, and the same person she tried to uh, get out of the Black Widows is now a mother and and, and wife uh, in, in this house. You know, it's a completely different situation she's walking back into. And then that heartbreaking moment when she act- effectively wants to reconnect with Natasha and tell her that she's okay and tell her that she's been saved. Um and wordless, no response to that. She asks the question, where is Natasha? I need to go and reconnect yeah. with her. And it's just wordless. That's the scene ends there. I thought that was a really good choice on behalf of, yeah. the, of the director and writer for the episode. Yeah, because theoretically, no one should know that Natasha's dead at that point. Uh, yeah. Because there's the the return. 
happens as they're battling in Endgame. Yes. Um, and Natasha had just died off world. So it's basically the timing wise, it was a good point to cut there because you can't really go, well, yeah, she's just gone off a world at the moment. You give her a shake and fight. She'll be back in 10 minutes. Like mm. it'd be grand. Yeah. Um, you know that whole trope where it's like the dad has gone out for a pack of cigarettes? Mm-hmm. That's what essentially happened to Natasha. Yeah. Yeah, perfect place to cut it there, but a really good scene. Yeah, no, really good. And again, as you said, it's just that reintroduction of Yelena and just that kind of yeah. who she is. I don't understand why one of the widows wasn't under control. Uh, that was, I didn't understand because we thought, I thought pretty much all of them were under it. I, I think it was the, that was what was difficult about the job. Having uh, recently rewatched uh, Black Widow, I think what was difficult about the mission that she sent on is that she has to do the full investigation of them before going to try and cure them of this uh, of this mind control. But not every single one of them were gotten to. Um, ah, right. So I think I think that's what it was. Um, and what we see here is this is this Anna, this former Black Widow, is effectively just retired and using her retired from being a Black Widow, but using her skills as an assassin, and then just tries to recruit everybody into that yeah. position, kind of going, "Look how much money you could make." It's like a pyramid yeah. scheme, uh, which I thought was quite fun. So I, uh, I'm pretty sure we'll see her again with the power broker at some point. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But that brings us into essentially the the beginning of the the full episode, and we get Kate's return back to her apartment. Where we see uh, introduction or reintroduction of Kate and Yelena, and uh, the the call back to Yelena's love of mac and cheese mm-hmm. from Black Widow. Yeah, love this. And dare I say it, I have something in common with Yelena as well, and that is lashings and lashings of hot sauce. Um, oh, and yeah. I love that. So I'm 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 just a cheesy guy, and the hot sauce just takes away from the taste of that lovely processed food that is boxed mac and cheese yeah. <laughs> so good so good i know fresh mac and cheese is better but uh from a box is pretty good too uh to like yeah. it but we have uh, again we have a much more fun yelena i love this conversation between the two characters and, yeah you know we we kind of wanted this when we said it last week we were hoping there was going to be a point where the two of them were going to sit down in a room and talk to each other and this was fantastic i loved the <laughs> play between the two of them i think the two of them play off each other really well i love yelena's overconfidence you know and kate going oh i'm glad i didn't kill you on the top of that building and you're gonna go that's the funniest joke you've made all night <laughs> absolutely <laughs> fantastic the, it, the the comedy here was excellent at, like just right at the start as well where she says yelena says i don't have any weapons on me sorry i don't have any weapons in my hands mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it's like sorry i do because my hands are a weapon mm-hmm. and just really really good but as well, just the 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 back and forth of it all was like you say with Kate was really good because you know Kate's trying to rile her up or or maybe just get back at her and say why do you keep saying Kate Bishop is it mm-hmm. to pretend that you know me or something and of course you just get that moment which no one would ever want and um, sat down for uh, evening boxed macaroni cheese with an assassin who says. Well, I do know you. Um, you know your mother, Eleanor. Your father deceased in mm-hmm. twenty twelve. Mm-hmm. All this kind of stuff, and um, knows her her college grades. Yeah. All this kind of stuff, and it's you. You see, um, Kate, kind of okay. That you know this is serious. Mm-hmm. Um, but loved all the interplay here. Um, really funny. But also, you know, there is a serious point from this conversation as well um, about do you truly know Clint Barton? You know, mm-hmm. what is this obsession um, and hero worship of the Avengers? Yeah. You know, what does that word even mean? I think many and people I- have asked what the word Avengers actually means. They tried really hard to explain <laughs> that in the movies, but it's kind of, we don't we don't protect the world, we avenge it. So you let stuff happen and then you fight back. Is that, is that what it really yeah, means? But, but, <laughs> but it is even the awkward comedy where Kate is having to say, well, I've known him for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. is just all... Such a great scene! This Absolutely. I loved it. I I just it, for me it was even beyond just the characters. Well, partially the characters. The characters are great, and they they have that banter. But the the actors here are just. I can understand why they now chose both of them, mm-hmm. and why 
I'm ex- I'm even more excited now for this next version of the Avengers where we get to see these two being the the Hawkeye and Widow and um, just kind of having that because when you when we remove that next level of sinister that comes towards the end mm-hmm. the the banter is great yeah. like yeah. if we see the two of these fighting soon like on the same side against I don't know. Hydra 2.0, we'll call them. I don't know, whatever. The Skrulls. Yeah. We know the Skrulls are coming. Uh, again, for Secret Invasion. Mm-hmm. Like, we see them there fighting, and they're, like, flipping around, having the, like, the Spider-Man level banter. Mm-hmm. That's just going to be on point. Exactly. That's yeah. Great. Exactly. You can kind of tell from these kind of scenes how good the actors, actors are, and how much... If the MCU has to rely on actors like this going forward, hey, it's in good hands. It, the chemistry, I think, is the best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's really, really good. And the other nice thing about this whole scene is Yelena nails who Clint is in terms of how he described himself to Kate, ultimately. There's a blood trail. He's mm-hmm. a killer. That's exactly yeah. what Clint says to her about what he was when she's trying to put him into a purple outfit it's no i'm i'm not supposed to be seen i am as much a weapon, uh, a weapon as yelena is and y- yelena recognizes that in him and so effectively case is getting the same talk just from yelena that she got from clint and i i really like that because they're both in the same line of business mm-hmm. yeah no and this was for just overall even the ending, seeing Yelena jumping out the window. Yep. Just the, the suave, like, whoink, and then just, like, this backfall. I'm like, yep. Yeah. She just has the... the oh, it was just fun. It was fun to see. It was really cool, wasn't it? But all that went through my head was, that's only a second story window. <laughs> we saw that from in the first episode when uh, when that building was being exploded. Did she really need the, the massive cable? We saw how many buildings all the Black Widows jumped off in the movie Black Widow. We, re- we actually joked about it, that they couldn't possibly be killed by a fall because of the amount of things they jumped off uh, in that movie. So she just did it for cool <laughs> points. She just did it for yeah. style yeah. points, but she definitely didn't need a rope to get out that window. <laughs> yeah, but it was oh, easy. No. It was easy for her, you know? Yep. She, she yeah. use a ma- gadget. It makes you look cool. Yeah. I think. I think yeah. she's learned from the school of Nick Fury uh, on that. <laughs> but, uh, yes, if you but a, can flaunt it. You know, I've got skills. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think that's it for the for the main point of uh, Elena's return. Uh, let's go on to our arrow point number two because there's somebody else that returns this episode. Ronan is back uh, <laughs> yeah. this episode. Um, I have to say it was interesting. I was looking at some of the photos back from earlier on in the season, um, just before started the recording. Tonight. Night. And I noticed how smiley Clint Barton is at the beginning of the season. And now he's really into depression almost mm-hmm. at this stage. Like we see him, he's moving out of obviously, finally moving out of Kate Ant's apartment and going to move in with Grills, the uh, the LARPer uh, that we've met a couple of times during the season. Um, he's moving in with him now. But there's a moment where he's sitting on the couch with Pizza Dog sitting on his lap and he looks like he is broken yeah. at this stage. I think he's exhausted as well. I think it's kind of that combination of there's the emotional toll, there's the physical toll of what's just gone on. I mean, he's just had a massive fight. And as Yelena says, you know, that fight was intense. You Mm -hmm. need to eat some macaroni cheese. (laughs) Um, And then he's also just had to sort of be, you know, the stern father figure to Kate. So he's probably just knackered. Um, So... It, uh, but it's it is more than that. But I think that's feeding into it. I yeah. mean, I just thought he would kind of wanted just to have a moment where he wasn't Clint Barton. Yeah. I guess you know, given later on in the episode he calls Laura up, he's also thinking about his family. It, of it's, course, that, yeah, it's yeah. that side of the thing. It's Christmas. He promised he would be there, and yet this is all just dragging out uh, further and further and further. Exactly. Yeah, and it gets worse in that we've we've seen the level of depression he was in and the avenging he was doing as Ronin during Endgame or what he was doing over those five years. Um, we've seen parts of it anyway. Um, when he kind of goes into the Yakuza and he talks about how hard it was for him when everyone disappeared. Yeah. Um, what you see here is now his actions have had consequences and they're coming home to roost. 
and I think that like he didn't think anyone would come back. So he's essentially as Ronan, he was killing everyone and everything. But his chickens are really coming home to roost here. It's the, the consequence of his actions yeah. as those five years as Ronan, where he, or four years as Ronan, where he was like continuously taking down. And he did not think they, he didn't think anyone was coming back. Like, so he, he did this with about great abandon. Now his family is back. The one thing he cared about more than all the other Avengers and life itself, he, was told to go live, so he's doing that. But now he has to clean up this mess. Yeah. And this mess is getting closer and closer. And I think he talks about when he's on the phone to Laura, it hasn't been brought to the big guy's attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this is weighing on his mind. This is him, like, essentially he's trying to spend his whole time making sure that this doesn't get on the big guy's kind of radar because it will all lead back because Maya has his family's name and numbers. Mm-hmm. Or kids, like, which I still think we haven't figured that one out. My assumption is that it's something on the watch. Like, again, it all comes back to this bloody Rolex. I still think it's connected to yeah. his wife. Laura Brown, yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I'm going to repeat, Laura Brown, the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, will be a perfect uh, casting for, yeah, no, uh, for definitely. Laura uh, in the show. But let's just quickly talk about about. Ronan as well you know the the character in the movies if you remember this the version of Ronan that we saw was effectively going out to punish all the bad people that stayed behind when randomly everybody like his family was snapped so that was what he was doing he was going around the world punishing bad evil people who got to stay and exist in this world um so I suppose there's a little bit of a twist on that here because he's effectively taken um guidance on who to kill from somebody uh it ended off being maya's father and that's why she's after him that's why she wants him dead exactly and um, we don't know how bad her father was we we saw a very caring man that was taking care of maya earlier on in the season when we had her introduction but we know that he couldn't afford um to put her through into into a, a special school for uh for people with with hearing difficulties um but we don't know the extent of how bad he was or whether somebody just pinned it on him and gave Ronan that information to get them out of the way. That's what seems to be being suggested in this episode, really. Yeah. yeah. And it's confirmation that it was Clint who did mm-hmm. the killing because I, I was a, a bit like Elena says, he's trying to protect his reputation. I was thinking, well, it couldn't have been Clint Barson, yeah. even though I... You know, you've seen him in Japan mm-hmm. uh, killing the the Japanese Yakuza. And so you get that confirmation. I also do think it, I, I understand why he put the Ronin suit on, but that must have been a little triggering for Maya um, to <laughs> come face to face. Like he could have taken the suit with him. And um, so no wonder there was the fantastic uh, fight which she oh, yeah. more than held her own like that was pretty cool actually i loved that and um, but certainly yeah it's the the he was informed on this and i'm guessing it's Kazi. so i i will add to this which is this is the joke i made about batman being in the show because essentially this was arkham um be, like batman in the arkham games taking down all the the baddies before you go to face the boss. Right, right. It's essentially like yeah. pulling people under cars and yeah. like disappearing up. And it was very Batman-esque. But... See, that's why I didn't understand your joke, Chris. All that was in my mind was Jurassic Park. I was thinking, this is a raptor. He's, oh, he's... oh, that too. Well, that could work too. just <laughs> visible. But Batman makes a lot more sense. But yeah. before, I, well, I had Predator. <laughs> <laughs> I had Predator or Alien, where it's just like suddenly that. So all the different cinematic universes. Yeah. yeah. Because it was, it felt very odd. Like, I loved it, I must say. I'm not going to criticize it or anything like that. But it did feel really odd that he was able to get from, like, across three cars to pull someone under a car. And then back three cars away to pull someone above a car and stuff. I was kind of going, how the speed doesn't make sense. That's that's almost like Quicksilver taught him a few tricks yeah. uh, in Sokovia. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. They, they, there was a few things, but I was like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll roll go with the punches. With <laughs> the fight was fantastic because yeah. we get to see Maya's again. Like, she held her own. So yeah. this is her becoming more and more in tune with her 
powers and abilities. In terms of your Kazi comment, it, it is probably 110% Kazi. Yeah. Based on what Maya says later. And on top of that, it was the, he basically, he was pointed by an informant of the Kingpin against two, or he was pointed in the direction of Maya's father. So Maya's father was working for her uncle, who was the big bad, mm-hmm. uh, and essentially Ronan was a violent informant. It probably, it, it could be Kazi and it should be Kazi, but then it wasn't done face to face because Hawkeye doesn't mention or he's seen Kazi now as well, twice. So he yes. would, th- you think if he would like, oh yeah, you're the one who told me to go kill her father. That never, ha- that hasn't come out. So exactly. That's exactly. true, yeah, actually. It's a, it's yeah. a piece of information that he received. Uh, effectively yeah. and she, he's kind of pinning it on there um there is also the complication of course uh when when this type of information is is being shared from one character to another and they're using things like he said this because of the boss and they're not saying any names yeah. so i was kind of thinking is it that kingpin wanted her father dead and made kazi share the information or kazi wanted her father dead to move up in the organization um but then why would he still stay as second in command to Maya? Um, so it's a little bit complicated. But to me, I thought it's Kingpin that wanted her father dead. Yes, absolutely. He mm. Kazi is just the informant, I think, mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Because Kingpin wouldn't want to be that closely associated oh, with yeah. that. So it's Kazi's the informant. It's why he stayed away on that night, because he knew it was happening. But he doesn't seem to have been rewarded for that. And although he could have been the lead until Maya had proven herself. So Maybe. he may have done, but he's now since been demoted again, which yeah. is still not particularly great. But he seems very loyal to her mm-hmm. as well. Maybe that's just a, a front as, um, here as well. Who, who knows? But it certainly, I just assumed it was kingpin wanting her father dead but he's getting all the other people to sort of pass the message on yeah. to the person who will inform ronan which is probably going to be Kazi. Yeah. um so yeah that was that was really good i do like that maya is beginning to question Kazi mm-hmm. on that you know you can see there's the hope that she's not going to go after um his his family because if she does, she is going to end up dead. Um, yeah. It's quite clear Clint will protect his family yeah. to the end uh, by any means necessary. And again, it's just that nice little, that kind of attitude. It links in what Yelena is saying to Kate um, over Macaroni. Mm-hmm. And speaking of Kate, she is here to sort of just save Clint from a, a sort of a counterattack finally from from maya i do like the crazy phone uh, all the messages being left by her as well oh, absolutely, she's yeah. like stop making me come across as the crazy person you know answer the phone <laughs> mm-hmm. i i absolutely love that but that was hilarious with her leaving all the voice messages it really reminded me of uh of swingers the john favreau movie yeah um where he's leaving all the voicemails for uh the girl he's had a bad date with uh, and ends off completely ruining their relationship because of the uh, because of the voicemails and i love that it ends with uh the voicemail message uh that you're trying to leave is full uh so uh so that's it you know he did say that he would delete and block her um but she's still at least able to get the phone to ring and get through to the voicemail and then tracks him using the phone as yeah. well. Yeah, and I also love her escape route was effectively an, an Uber. Uber. An Uber in somebody else's yeah. name, yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> really, really good um, because Clint's expecting, you know, helicopters or mm-hmm. you know some elaborate escape plan. Yeah. And she's, Are you Tabitha? Yeah. <laughs> she's hired a, a, an Uber. Really good, though. I will say, though, there is a really good reason why he's wearing the running outfit going up to Maya. I think... May might think that Hawkeye's trying to protect somebody if he walked up to her with the suit. That's Whereas true. By wearing the suit, showing his abilities into the fight and then taking her down, he and then taking the mask off and revealing who he is, that it is Clint Barton, he's basically saying to her, I am absolutely the person you're looking for. Leave me and my family alone. We're walking away kind of thing. Yeah, um, and that's, that's to the it. point of him apologizing to natasha for what he's about to do absolutely at uh 
Grand Central Station. That was quite an emotional scene. It, it, it was really. Really well played. Um, because he gave it up for her. Mm. Um, so th- that, that was really a nice little touch in, in here yeah. as well, for sure. But I think speaking of bad guys or, or women, um, we should move on to our arrow point three. Mm-hmm. Um, Eleanor works for who? Yes, I think we definitely know who Eleanor is working for now. <laughs> Absolutely. Give me a K. <laughs> Give me an I. I. <laughs> Give me an N. N. <laughs> Give me a G. G. Give me a P. P I N. Yes, it is old King It Pin. certainly is. But there was lots of interesting stuff that happened before that point. You know, just to kind of set it all up, I suppose, uh, to make sure that we, in case you didn't notice uh, that she was uh, a duplicitous character from the start. Um, Kate returning home and telling her mom to investigate Jock. Um, we find out that effectively, I guess, Jock is a patsy. Um, yep. I, I love how it comes <laughs> yeah. across because the cops come in, arrest Jock, take him out and he's going, it can't possibly be me. I haven't done a day of work in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back home for for the uh, for the party later, which I, I absolutely love because suddenly now I'm kind of going, oh, okay, he is just an idiot that Eleanor's got as a front for for. But is her. good with swords. Yeah, exactly. So I actually don't think there's anything villainous about Jack there. No, 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 I don't think so. Unless, unless we find out that he's the good swordsman. So the character of the swordsman in the comic books both was both a villain mm-hmm. sometimes and a hero, depending on what age, what comic book, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So could we find out the reason he called Hawkeye the archer is because it was a subtle nod because he knows him yeah. and there still is a connection and they were both shield at some point and Shock mm-hmm. is deep shield to go against the, the person at the end of this. Yeah, but that's, that's exactly. And of course, we are in Marvel and it is all connected. And we have just been introduced to a very special sword in um, Eternals as well with the Black Knight. So not to say that there's going to be anything connecting them, but yeah. you could see them connecting them. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Jack getting a little jealous of this ancient sword with the ebony blade. The ebony blade, exactly. So it's it's... You could see potential here with yeah. Jack in the future. Yeah. He could he could much like our our dear friend in Iron Man three and then Shang Chi, the Mandarin, t- Trevor Slattery, mm-hmm. the true Mandarin. Yeah. Um he he was a bit of a joke in the beginning and then he at a certain point kind of came back and became a bad guy. Uh, in prison for a while. So we could see Jacques go into prison as a patsy, come out as a true bad, bad person. <laughs> it could be a that. A true supervillain. It could be that, yeah. Uh, he's off the table for me as a villain right now, so I think yeah. he'll have to go through some journey. I just I just love the idea <laughs> that effectively we had thought that maybe there was some kind of power couple. Um, we thought that maybe he was the bad guy and she was uh, unaware of what's going on. And now it's kind of flipped a little bit that it seems like he has no idea what's actually going on. And he's the patsy. She's the uh, the villainous one here. Yeah, I mean, it, it was pretty well signposted was, that but... she there was more to her than meets the eye. Yeah, of for sure. Like she's a transformer. Too less than that than yes. meets the eye. A little less. Than okay. That. Uh, Disney don't own Transformers just yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yes. The final reveal of the episode we have um, Yelena following the person that paid her and realizing it is Kate Bishop's mother, um, and that she has a photograph of her with the big but big guy with uh, the person that Hawkeye has been just referring to as the big man all season. Um, we kind of knew it was coming. We had mentioned it earlier on in the season that we'd heard Kingpin's voice. We'd seen a hand looked very Vincent D'Onofrio like. And here in the episode, finally confirmed in photograph form that uh, we have our kingpin back in his trademark white suit. Did you guys see the cane in his hand as well? Uh, yeah. yeah. Very comic book kingpin again. Yeah. Yes, it, it wasn't because he had the, the white suit top on. Mm-hmm. Um, and also because as I was writing the synopsis, Derek put on Daredevil, Marvel Netflix Daredevil season one. Mm-hmm. And it was the opening of episode eight. Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't finish the synopsis because I was just transfixed by Vincent uh, 
Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. We're back to John. Vincent not being able to Vincent D'Ofrio? D'Ofrio. Nope. <laughs> Vincent D'Ofrio. D'Ofrio. Yes. Yeah, Frio. That's what yeah. It is. Vincent D'Ofrio. There you go. Yeah, excellent. Woohoo. Um, just like so, so good. So much presence. Yeah. I mean, absolute presence on the screen mm-hmm. as Kingpin. Um, yeah. Really, really good. Yeah. And he was Derek... fantastic at Daredevil. Really want to see him in this yeah. show. Want to see him moving. Uh, and I'm not yes. sure whether we're going to get it now. I think we have confirmation that he's there. But I think you could do an episode six of Hawkeye without him appearing in it by to wrap up the storylines of this show. I think you could actually do it without having that's not real appear on screen. It would seem like a horrible tantalization of us uh, all as fans to say he's back, but you're not going to see him until whatever project we're going to see him in in the future. Echo. He yeah. will be back for Echo. Yeah. Well, that, that is a hundred percent where I'm go- like, I, so we didn't get into it. Echo and the Kingpin have in the comic books have a major backstory. Mm-hmm. He is heavily tied to her origin. Um, so that is where my assumption is he is going to play. I think with this, I think we get a small scene with him next, but the big, so. <laughs> the, the yeah. big, big aspect is the, the next kind of the next show, which is Echo. I think yeah. that's where I think Maya will be going after the big man, um, for who knows what. Um, well, and the other nice touch was in the end credits where you have the, the hulking body of, uh, the kingpin so um, over the you know the the cityscape um, in in the the end credits as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, just just yeah. for extra certainty. And Vincent D'Onofrio credited with that fuzzy still exactly. um, as well. <laughs> exactly. I yeah. loved that uh, Vincent D'Onofrio shared that image on Twitter to confirm his return, just with the line "When I was a boy," because it's so well, it's so iconic that line of him. From Daredevil, I think that was the first trailer. That was the the opening line of the first trailer for Daredevil was him saying that line of "When I was a boy," um, and I, I just love that that's how he shared it and acknowledged that he's there. Here's a fun hypothesis: How does Val connect in with Kingpin? That is very interesting, isn't it? Yeah, because we don't really know where Val connects in in comic books, as we've mentioned before, in all the appearances of, of Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. She is a member of Shield. She's she was yeah. Nick Fury's second in command, yeah. lover and partner for many many years. Um, whereas in the shows, she's kind of been picking up characters in uh, in Falcon the Winter Soldier. She picked up um, the former Captain America, we'll say. He, U.S. He, Patriot. He was Captain America for a while and became U.S. Patriot. Um, in Black Widow, she picks up Yelena to join the crew, effectively. Um, is she just a person that, that contracts killers um, yeah. to, to be used by whoever the higher spitter is? Is that what it is? Is that is this contract came from Kingpin to uh, for Yelena to go and kill Ronan? Um, is that what it is? Or is there somebody else involved? Is Val, has, does Val have no connection? We we also saw a, a, in in Daredevil a, a a woman who held her own, who sat on the right hand side of the kingpin, who everyone mistook as just a woman with great fashion taste, and was actually secretly as crazy and power hungry as he was, and helped run his empire. I mean, none other than his wife, Vanessa. Vanessa. Of course. Do we think Val could be Vanessa? No, I, I I definitely think Kingpin would kill Val. He wouldn't be able to he wouldn't be able to cope with her cheeky banter. <laughs> he <laughs> like it, Wait, hold on. Does that mean like he'd kill me because of my cheeky banter? <laughs> yes, he would. Okay, um, okay. Kingpin would kill all saying. of us, to be honest. I I, th- uh, I yes, think he's um good in his way. You know, Kingpin is all business. Um, he is quite a serious character, even in the comic books. Yeah. Um, and so I suspect Val could find herself drowned in a bowl of soup at the dinner table if, um, 
if that was the nuptials between them, you know? <laughs> I don't I don't think it's going to be Vanessa. I think given Valentina has uh, a comic book history all her own and Vanessa had her own comic book history and TV show history given three seasons of, of Daredevil, I don't think the two would be uh, interchangeable characters. <laughs> um, I don't think they're going to canonize uh, Daredevil, the TV show, either in, uh, in this version of the MCU. I don't think they're going to go back and and explore anything that happened in those shows. Um, yeah. I think it will, it will still stand alone. And I think they're going to create some, um, some future stories with the character of, of Kingpin and where he will appear in the future. But I don't think we're going to get any, any kind of connection to any, uh, unfinished storylines within Daredevil. It's the right move. When we, when we popped it onto Netflix, I, it, I was reminded again, those shows were 18s and they were very, very violent. So, um, I, I, it would be unlikely we'll see that kind of violence on, uh, on Disney. Again, I agree. I very much agree. I just yeah. thought it was a nice kind of. At least she might work for him. I, it could be that they're they're now just because we don't have a Norman Osborn. Um, what we're getting is essentially a um, Kingpin is the man setting up the Thunderbolts. She's like Val is working for him. Him, he is setting it similar to the way, um, it, like the Thunderbolts are kind of initially just a super team of a super villain team, but then there was a comic book piece where. Uh, basically, uh, Osborne took over Shield for a while, made Hammer, and his Avengers were made up of the Thunderbolts and made up of villains just to look like the heroes. Mm. So you actually did have US Patriot in there. You had Bullseye instead of Hawkeye. All these characters there. So what they could be doing is Val works for Kingpin. He, that he's she's pulling together a team of. Thunderbolts of evil vendors like for his hit jobs because he needs it. So it'd be Maybe, interesting to I, see. But I even wonder if if just her job is she's getting the people together and she's the one responsible for these contract killers or these these people and he just happens to be someone that put in a contract on this particular thing through Eleanor, uh, put in a contract on on Ronan through Eleanor. So, uh, so oh yeah, that, that makes sense too. If that's what it was, whether whether Val works directly for him or not. We'll probably find out uh, in the future, and hopefully we will, because we really want to see Vincent D'Onofrio back in this universe. Oh uh, yeah, as well. So yeah, really we could find what out. What a great reveal, though, for the end of the episode. Absolutely, I I, I needed smelling salts. I think <laughs> after it, um, yeah, so cool, really, yes. really cool. And we'll find out next week. We are but a week and an hour away from finding and knowing all these things, because we'll have watched it and be ready to talk about the the yeah. end of this season. It comes out Wednesday next week, and. That's it. That's the, that's the, that's how the, the fat lady sung, as they say. That's that the end of the its end season. Of Hawkeye next week. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Any, any notes on the episode that you guys want to talk about that we haven't talked about in our top three hour points? Our LARPing thieving fireman has a new name for our pizza dog. Could pizza dog be getting the name lucky? We will see. He said he has a better name than pizza dog. <laughs> yes, and speaking of our LARPing friend Grills, he also said that he has the outfits for <laughs> the Clint and Kate as well. You know, I, I said this before, you know, we have heard about these outfits um, being made on the show. Uh, we we had the, the LARPers going off to make them for them. But it's been on the poster <laughs> since before the show was released what they look like in these costumes. And now we're going to get to the sixth episode of the show and they still haven't <laughs> worn them. One other thing that to remind you of what Daredevil season one was like, we saw what Charlie Cox looked like in the outfit of Daredevil before the show came out. And we didn't see him in the outfit of Daredevil <laughs> until the final scene of season one of Daredevil. Now that was 10 hours long, so much longer to wait, but it's just another thing that's reminding me of Daredevil watching the show Hawkeye. Cause I have this feeling it's just going to end with the two of them in their suits on top of a building in New York yeah. going, there you go. Now you've finally seen the suits. Uh, I want to see them both in their suits. Oh, definitely. Do we get, will there be a stupid H helmet that he'll go, I'm not wearing that. And he puts it on for a second and then takes it off. Will that be I don't part think so. of I think, it? I think there was just a nod to that in the drawing from Kate. I think that was the, uh, that was the joke, wasn't it? Uh, I am not it wearing was. that. Just uh, even in the drawing, I'm not even wearing that. So, uh, yeah, I think that was a, that was a good nod before. Uh, I just want to give a little shout out to the wonderful tracksuit mafia from the episode because we didn't talk about them. I love just the banter between yeah. the two of them in the car where they're comparing themselves to, uh, grace tracksuit wearers of history. They're comparing themselves to, uh, to, 
Run DMC, who were playing on the radio, great tracksuit wearers, always wearing their Adidas kit. They're comparing themselves to uh, Olympians who've worn amazing tracksuits uh, at the Olympics, and also comparing themselves to the Royal Talon Bombs, uh, <laughs> famously uh, all wearing tracksuits in the in the poster for a terrible movie. But um, but I know a lot of people like that. Yeah. Absolutely, that, that they were really funny. Even the scream as the arrow comes oh, through the hilarious. windshield as well. Um, really enjoyed that. I actually have one more note. Mm-hmm. Um, just the reference by Yelena when, with the sightseeing. We have about the Christmas tree at the Rockefeller Center mm-hmm. and the ice rink. There's the Empire State Building, but she does also mention the new and improved Statue of Liberty. I shall just leave it there. Okay. Yep. That's what we're gonna leave it there. Mm-hmm. Want to find out more? Keep listening to our podcast. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Yeah, we will talk about that on a separate podcast. I'm surprised you even mentioned that, John. <laughs> I think that's it uh, for the notes and points uh, for this episode. Um, did this episode keep on the path? Do you defend Hawkeye episode five, Ronan? John? Yes, I do defend episode five, Ronan. Uh, I give it. Four and a half Uber escapes out of five. Um, it was short and sweet, but it was funny. Mm-hmm. It was touching. It were, had Yelena in it. It was blipping. Um, great blipping. Awesome effect uh, from the snap. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved uh, Ronan meeting Maya. The conversation with Yelena and Kate. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. The kingpin, you know, the kingpin, v- old Vincent. I'm not going to say his surname in case it takes us 25 minutes. Um, <laughs> and that three seasons we recorded about. Yeah, and about I, Daredevil, and you did learn, but I, just I did. out of practice, out of practice, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, so for me, this was just short and sweet, and really on point. I, I really, really. Loved it, mm-hmm. and um, I just hope they give the final episode an hour. But that's not this episode, so yeah, I give this four and a half Uber escapes out of five. Excellent. How about yourself, Chris? Do you defend Hawkeye episode five, Ronan? I do defend it. Um, I'm really enjoying this season. It's uh, light. It's actiony. It's like got some good points, and we got Vincent D'Onofrio. Right at the end. Mm -hmm. Like, it's bringing in characters that we wanted. I really wish, like, they hadn't, that there hadn't been rumors. And I really wish they hadn't have seen, we hadn't have seen the white suit. Because can you imagine our pulses? Can you imagine in the alternate reality, the alternate part of the multiverse, Mm -hmm. there's a, there's a place where that scene with the uncle was not there. And there was no rumours leaked out. And we just saw at the end of this episode, the Kingpin. It would have just been, oh, like, <laughs> like explosion. And that, like, basically we would have seen God in space and time. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed where we are. I am very curious how this final episode goes. That's kind of where I'm not going to talk belabor much more of the point. It's like, we will know this time next week so with my thoughts on that Derek what about you do you defend this episode of Hawkeye yeah this was a great episode once again you know I I will say it kept reminding me or the show keeps reminding me of Daredevil and the excitement I I had watching Daredevil and when we were podcasting just about the one Marvel show at the time with uh, weeks to wait in between and then suddenly a movie would come out in the cinema from Marvel and do you remember the planning that had to go into it from Marvel TV studios to make sure something big was happening on the TV so that people would stay in and watch that and go out and see the movie. And it feels like this is perfectly planned with a movie like Spider-Man in the cinema. People are going to obviously go out and watch that. And here they are with a massive reveal of their own to break the internet. (laughs) You know, it feels like perfectly planned so that they can actually get eyeballs on to watch the show. I'm so happy we watched it. The minute it came out, like we always do, so we weren't spoiled by the fact that Vincent D'Onofrio was in the episode. That's awesome. We knew he was coming because there was been reference to him. We knew he'd be coming back at some point, but to know that he's here in the universe, played by the same actor, that's really cool. But also, Yelena Belova 
once again in this show is so great. Again, we mentioned she was there last week, having such a short gap from when Black Widow was finally released in cinemas. It's fantastic to see her back this quickly because she was such a wonderful character there and seeing her here in all her wisecracking glory uh, right beside Kate Bishop, able to hold her own. Uh, beside her, Haley Steinfeld is fantastic in the show and has been throughout, but seeing her being able to have that kind of banter with someone that's really threatening <laughs> in, in your house, you know? Yeah. Um, what, what's it that that's, uh, Yelena says to her, you know, um, I know you think this must be crazy. I'm sitting down for dinner with the person that tried to kill me, you know, <laughs> and Yelena going, I didn't try to kill you. If I tried to kill you, you'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Good, good, good witty banter. Great moments uh, in this episode. I'm really looking forward to how it all pans out next week. Do we have any final thoughts about what you think is going to happen next week? Will we have Kingpin in there or will we just resolve the storylines for Hawkeye season one? Kingpin for a brief scene. Not the main main thing will be get all the pieces out of here. Figure out the Rolex is the 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 piece. I don't know how much we'll get into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether it will that that's going to be the 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 question mark for me. Whether it's handed off to someone. Whether we find out more details about it. Whether it's a mission for Kate to look into. Um and also. What continues there? Because we've been so many young Avengers as from the comic books have been introduced. Uh, this is the first hugely directed one. Uh, I like is a co-star, whereas some of the others have just been supporting actors and actresses. Um, I, I'm so, so interested to see where it's all goes. Absolutely. And I, I, I get the feeling that the final scene that we'll see in the final episode is them handing over that Rolex watch to whoever it is that it belongs to. Yeah. And it will be somebody that will be a nice big surprise to close out the season. That yeah. The, yeah. the episode won't be hinging on Vincent D'Onofrio appearing for the entire episode. It'll be hinging on all the characters we've learned so far, tying up their stories, and then one final scene where somebody is given the watch back and told, uh, and we're being introduced to a character uh, in the in this this world. Yeah, well, all I'm going to say on, on the matter of Kingpin is Kingpin for episode six. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay. I think it's time to go to the pub. Uh, John, we have a pub quiz question to give out about this episode. We certainly do. It is question five for episode five. Fellow quizzes and fellow defenders. Yes, Grills is cool. What three things can he do? Ooh. That came quickly. It, it's a pretty quick one. <laughs> I love it. If you have been collecting the pub quiz questions each episode, make sure you email us the answers to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. I almost said email the questions to us, but no, <laughs> the answers. Email those to us. By the end of the year, 31st of December, you'll have all six questions by that stage, and you'll be with a chance to get some Hawkeye goodies. So, yes, email them in to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. John, do you want to give them the question one more time? Sure. Grills is cool. What three things can he do? I have to say as well, also correct on um, grills is cool is grills are cool, as though I'm speaking <laughs> about course. a grill, but I have a grill fetish. Grills are cool, John. Grills are cool. <laughs> I don't know. But grills is most definitely cool. But grills is definitely cool. <laughs> Let's have a listen to your thoughts about Hawkeye so far. Uh, first up on feedback, we got an email in from Pathinia Locklear on episode four who says, Hey there, Defenders. This episode was good. I'm just going to fire off a few things that stood out to me. If the objective is to not like Jack, well, Marvel has won. I don't like him at all. (laughs) He was so smug with Clint, first calling him Archer, which was actually very funny. And then I felt like he was being extremely sarcastic when he thanked him for saving the world. Again, the mother is becoming increasingly villainous. Also, Kate really has no clue who her mother is. The fact that she's never seen her mother this way around a man and she's never seen her dancing to me says they really have very little to do with each other. Clint and his wife speak German? That was interesting. My parents spoke Pig Latin around us as children. I still suck at deciphering it. (laughs) Did anyone else see the Trust a Bro moving company in the parking lot? Hilarious. I hope I wasn't the only one that saw that. Uh, you weren't Parthenia. Uh, that's uh, that's the big group for the tracksuit mafia. That's their uh, that's their company or their front company, I guess. <laughs> uh, Parthenia continues. I loved the end fight scene. I was very shocked to see Natasha's sister. That was a really good reveal. I feel like I should have expected it. 
but I didn't and love that even more. Also, any theories on the watch owner? I defend this episode and will flick an ornament across the room and knock someone unconscious just to prove it. <laughs> Until next episode, you magnificent tri- trio, Parthenia. Oh, one more thing about Natasha's sister. Did I see her do a superhero landing that she thought was so silly? Yes, you did. I th- yes, I think so too. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. <laughs> um wouldn't just nod in this episode as well to the uh, to the flicking an ornament across the room. I love that moment when uh, when um, Kate is on the phone trying to leave messages for uh, for Clint and tries the trick again. You hear her smashing a window in the background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice little one. She's still got a bit to learn. Thanks, Parthenia. Yeah, thank you so much, Parthenia. Uh, another email came in from James Uren on episode four. He says, episode four felt like a more low-key edition, the calm before the storm, I guess. Although, to be fair, most would after last week. Mm. It feels quite brave in a series of six to have such a talky, talky episode. But as a comic fan, I really enjoyed it. Particularly some of the great references in the Kate and Clint scenes, like the coin flip, Robin Hood arrow, the boomerang arrow. It also took a couple of shots to notice Hawkeye's redacted mug, but I really enjoyed that too. Future pub quiz prize, by the way. Very it may very well be, James, <laughs> uh, if it can be produced in time. James continues, On the whole coin flip discussion, I have to say I find the idea of Clint as a non-powered hero who has to learn and practice these things so much more interesting. The whole thing about firing toenails just doesn't work for me. Or worse, that line from Civil War about golf plays 18, shot 18. (laughs) It might be tongue-in-cheek, but I prefer to think he is just a really good archer with a lot of training. The other thing is the constant shock at the idea that he might have killed people in the past. In fact, there is a whole comic arc about a tape of him supposedly doing an assassination. Mm -hmm. But come on. This isn't Steve Rogers or Bruce Wayne with no kill policy. Clint is a master assassin and closer to Frank Castle than anyone, perhaps with slightly better ethics. I mean, there are only so many times you can shoot people in the arm or leg with an arrow. Mm -hmm. And Kate herself must have left behind her own trail of tracksuits after those explosive arrows. The second half of the episode sped up with the rooftop fight And despite only watching Black Widow a few weeks ago, I had totally forgotten Yelena would be appearing in the series. So it was really a nice surprise to have her popping up. I'm really looking forward to seeing how things develop between her and Kate, as presumably the future Black Widow and Hawkeye's on a new Avengers team. Mm. By the way, and a bit off track, I'm really enjoying the new series of Titans on Netflix. Very different tone to this or Gotham, but with some characters we know and love. And interested to hear, too, if this is one you are watching at all, Jimbo. Uh, Thanks so much, uh, Jim. Thanks so much, Jim. Uh, Titans is one. Uh, I have started um, season three in particular. I've started and I haven't finished uh, just because it only actually recently came to Netflix Ireland uh, in the last week or so. So I've got one episode in. Loved the first two seasons. Interested to see where they're going with season three based on what happens in episode one. Mm-hmm. Um, but it will be one I'm going to try and get to and have a look at over the Christmas break. Yes, uh, well, we're, we're watching it slowly but surely yep. uh, moving through it. and about three or four episodes in. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm really enjoying it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And uh, on the, the point... Uh, Jimbo that you make about um, Kate must have left behind a few sort of dead tracksuits after the explosive arrows. Absolutely. I I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's when the death is effectively off scene, really, or with no blood. Exactly. And you you forget that ultimately there's a high probability of death from that explosive arrow to a van, uh, yeah. right in the engine where the petrol is. And you know that actually ties into the comic arc that Jim is uh, is talking about here um, of the tape of Clint Barton performing an assassination. Yeah. It's actually not the fact that he has done an assassination, because that's kind of his job. He works for S.H.I.E.L.D. It's the fact that there's a tape of it that's going out in the public, and that's much yeah. more of the problem. He's an Avenger, and there's a tape of him assassinating somebody. Um, 
it's fine if it's kept surreptitious. If not, it's fine if it's behind closed doors. That's kind of Nick Fury's policy on murdering someone. Um, it's fine if nobody finds out. But if there's a tape of it, uh oh, this is going to be a big yeah. PR nightmare. So um, that's kind of the way they they uh, they deal with it in the comic book as well. So you, so you're pretty right. If uh, if nobody sees any bodies, I'm sure they were fine. Yeah, collateral damage is fine as long as we don't see it. Was my sister collateral damage? Exactly. So where I was going there, I (laughs) I lay him out and you knock him down. Mm -hmm. Um, Moving on. Sorry, by the way, thank you so much, Jimbo. Yes. Uh, Moving on, we got an email for episode five feedback from Victor Von Doom. He begins with, Holiday greeting defenders. Why, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As usual, another great episode. Yelena's blip and return scene was exciting and the effects were really good. Mm -hmm. It must have been hard to lose five years and her sister. I could almost feel Kate's heartbreak when she first returned home to her mother. And Kate's scene with Yelena was both funny and informative. It seems we heard the Black Widow and Endgame themes quite a lot in this episode. Val must have really done a number on Yelena by convincing her Clint kind of killed Natasha. Victor goes on to say, keeping the timelines and the multiverse events straight is quite challenging. The Run DMC fans, also known as the Tracksuit Mafia, cemented their position as nozzles. And the self-shooting <laughs> in the foot made me laugh. I like the Clint-Maya confrontation and battle. Mm-hmm. Maybe Clint gave Maya something to consider and pursue regarding the informant working for her boss. The Uber getaway seemed to puzzle Clint, but was very much like something Kate would think of is laura a former agent of shield she seems to have some of those skills Mm -hmm. could the kingpin not just expose clint to the world as ronan cheaper than hiring a bunch of assassins Mm -hmm. finally can we get the criminal organizational chart my (laughs) guess it goes kingpin to laura to maya to kazi with val as an independent contractor also i loved the mr grinch closing theme do you think that was aimed at the kingpin Mm. Eagerly awaiting episode six and the TVPI podcast. Excelsior, Victor Von Doom. I presume, Victor, you meant uh, Kingpin to Eleanor, to Maya, to Kazi, because Laura is um, Clint's wife. So I don't think she's in the criminal organization, but Mm. that could be the big reveal next episode, is it? Yeah, she was always the. Oh my god! <laughs> no, it's not. Do you not think Laura? But no, be. but do you think Laura was connected no. to the kingpin? No, 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 no not, not at all. No, but she, she's shield. She's very likely a former shield agent. Hopefully, Laura Brown, as we said uh, before, and I'll keep repeating that until everybody is on my side. Uh, not mockingbird. Hashtag not mockingbird. <laughs> you keep saying that. Yeah, I'm totally with you, Victor, on uh, the the feels you get from Kate when she's with her mother back oh, at yeah. the apartment. Uh, it's not something we really touched on, actually, uh, when we were discussing it, but you're absolutely right. It She felt devastated. You could really feel it. And, uh, yeah, good spot because, um, again, you know, there's a lot of comedy in this, a lot of action, but here you, you see... Um, the you know that other side of kate bishop and yeah it was really really stand out yeah just that letdown and disappointment that her big hero crush who she was working with and now that's it they're over you know it's uh, yeah. it's it played really really well loved it thanks so much victor coffee and vodka says an email he says greetings carlot defenders <laughs> for all the talk of an episode which would blow up twitter the third struck harder Yet still a good one this time. Eleanor was all over the place as a loving mother, damage controlling exec, killer by proxy, and possible new second in command to Fisk. So many masks. Speaking of, if a picture paints a thousand words, I told you so might be among them, but only to someone much less mature than me. It also says, see you on Echo in 2022, more than it does in the finale of Hawkeye. It was nice to see a fleshed out Yelena. From all the hype, she and we needed this screen time. Can only assume that Ronan's informant texted him as Hawkeye didn't identify Kazi as such last week. With Willie giving giving the kill order, we comic nerds can breathe a sigh of relief. The centerpiece fight started well with Clint Batmaning the bros in quick order, <laughs> but found myself wishing they hadn't changed up Echo's power set would have made for a much better battle. Next week's episode has been all but written in this one. Maya dispatching her and formerly Kingpin's lieutenant, Clint versus Yelena, Kate versus Eleanor, new costumes, Kate's ascension to... Hawkeye status and Clint finally home for the holidays with Lucky the Dancing 
pizza dog wouldn't worry that i've spoiled anything as my thoughts thus far have been 90 percent incorrect finally of all the marvel disney shows so far this one would benefit the most from a binge watch over an episodic one four number twos out of five or four stupid arch rocks tana bombs triple xl white suits ruined rugs out of five <laughs> also way to mark grill as an upcoming victim kate never never over compliment a non-player character unless you want to see them fridged peace and take care <laughs> <Coffee and vodka. laughs> i love it i hope grill survives through the next episode yeah. i hope i hope that rule uh, doesn't it doesn't stand out well given all the batman analogies he has to be the alfred he really does mm-hmm. moving forward um the man exactly. in the chair yeah grills is cool. He's got mm. so many skills that could benefit Kate uh, as the pub quiz question uh, That's true. asks. Yeah. That is true. Thanks so much, Kathy Vodka. Over on Facebook, Dad Lee says, not going to lie, I'm a 38-year-old man and I screamed like a little girl at the end of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we all did a bit. We yeah. squeaked. Continuing on over on Facebook, Heather Wallace said, I knew it. I knew it. I just knew Yelena had been snapped. Not suppression in the game wasn't just that Wanda and Sam were gone after they'd been on the run together for two years, or that Laura Barton and the kids were gone, or that Clint had gone rogue. Her newly found sister was gone too. All of her different families were broken apart by the snap. This was such a good episode, and Clint talking to Nat outside the memorial was heart-wrenching. Mm-hmm. You can see his survivor's guilt, and that he keeps going on only to honour what she gave him. Mm-hmm. The visuals of Yelena being snapped and coming back were so good. As for Anna, the Black Widow assassin Yelena was trying to free in 2018, she had a way better taste before she got hitched and had a kid. <laughs> the bathroom redecoration was just hideous. <laughs> I love it harsh harsh God. it's all about that modern retro chic oh it's all about that awful green i'm totally with you heather that, that hey my bathroom's green no, no it's, it's not, not. <laughs> downstairs under the, t- the stairs yeah oh, there you oh, go oh, so no your toilet yeah, yeah. yes my okay. ba- you yes, don't my go toilet. and bath in that um, little cubby hole downstairs. <laughs> I well, don't. we haven't been over to your My house water in quite closet. a long time, Chris. But I presume That's it still it. looks better than um than Anna's bathroom. It did look awful, but a good contrast show the snap, I suppose. I would, that was yeah. The point. And I would say your bathroom, your downstairs water closet, is more <laughs> of a teal. Yes, oh, fine, wow. fine. I I prefer rainforest green, but we'll 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 say teal. But anyway, uh, thank you so much, Heather, for the feedback. Uh, also on Facebook, Michael Booth says, oh, wow, pausing at the opening credits to say just how great that opening scene was. I know we saw Monica come back in WandaVision, but this was something else. Yet, yeah, thank you, Michael. Uh, I am very honored now to uh, read Michael's edit as he continues into the um, into the episode. <laughs> Michael edits with just finished. Squeeze! <laughs> and so good how they weaved him into the whole storyline of Ronan, how he was working for Kingpin and not doing it all on his own. Also, Yelena was perfect in the episode, though she seemed more crazy funny than witty funny like Black Widow. Oh, well, I guess that's what being blipped out and back into existence will do for you. I'm glad I watched this on release night. There would have been no escaping the spoilers. Uh, thanks, Michael, uh, mm. for the feedback. Yeah, I'm totally with you all the on the squeal, <laughs> uh, as well as with uh, Yelena as well. Um, really, um, just really nice, big, punchy moments here in this episode. Absolutely. Thanks, Michael. Brandy Lee Sanderson says, that opening, hot damn. I love how they show yet another version of the blip return. Far From Home showed the comedic nature of someone watching it happen. Monica's showed the chaotic, someone coming back in a stressful environment. And this shows how it can feel like a disorientating blink of the eye. And everything around you has changed. If there were anyone who still wasn't convinced Eleanor was a bad guy, as soon as Kate mentions the Jack name in connection with Sloan Enterprises, the look on Eleanor's face she does convinced any holdouts. I was right. I love Yelena and Kate's dynamic. 
can't wait for the interaction when Kate's not too terrified to ramble. <laughs> the fact <laughs> that Yelena is working as a hired killer, not to mention her past as a widow and judging Clint for having blood on his hands, but at least Yelena didn't act like she was even a little bit upset about Ronan as she was about Natasha, convinced Jack is innocent, but I really want them to have him be a lesser bad guy, but unaware of Eleanor's connections. Laura is a ride or die. She all but shrugs and says, yep, yeah, sometimes you just have to kill. What else could you do? <laughs> <laughs> if you're only going to have one action scene in the show, I'm glad it was done right. It had great choreography. I wonder if Clint would have handled it differently if he knew of the uncle connection with Fisk, not just Boss. Could Eleanor be a former widow, widow or contract killer? Not brainwashed, just money power similar to Anna? And what and where is the watch? Will it be answered next episode? Did Fisk want Maya's father taken out or was it Kazi? Trying to move up from number two to the leader, maybe. And that's why Kazi doesn't want Uncle involved. And the tracksuit mafia bros are, are the unsung villains of this series. The tracksuit mafia bros are fantastic. I love them. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, bro. <laughs> as to whether it's Kazi or whether it's Fisk that ordered the hit on uh, on Maya's father we're definitely going to find that out next week I'd say yeah ab yes. absolutely and I'm loving the theory that Eleanor could be a former widow um, I, I I really like that and can you imagine if the show ended and it was just Yelena just sprayed her in the face with <laughs> the stuff that wiped the, uh, <laughs> the uh, mind uh, controlling that was there and suddenly Eleanor's back to being a normal mom <laughs> oh my God. well yeah she wouldn't know how to cope and brandy i think you've pinpointed it uh kate's dynamic um when she's with yelena she's terrified and there's that rambling nervousness and and the eyes show it all in her performance as well mm -hmm. uh really good spot yeah yeah thank you so much we also have some feedback from ronaldo who said big episode for two reasons first the exchange between Yelena and Kate Bishop in Kate's apartment. Great dialogue, and Florence Pugh stole the show. Second, the reveal of Kingpin at the end. I think my water broke. <laughs> Congratulations. Well done, Ronaldo. Muzzle off! It's a Kingpin! <laughs> well done, Ronaldo. Thanks so yeah, much. Thanks, Ronaldo. Dr. Bob Phillips says... Am I the only one slightly embarrassed at not seeing the crime boss using Ronan thing before the reveal? Absolutely not, Bob. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm there as well. Uh, Bob continues, I loved the crazed voice messages. The pizza, get that dog some vitamins. <laughs> Grills and the blip return. Very delighted by the new Hawkeye-Widow combo we're seeing evolve and sticking to my first theory of Maya becoming heroic at the end. Mm -hmm. Yep. she's Well, she's certainly going to be the ambiguous villain, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The complex yeah. villain. Yes. I like, it. I like it. Thanks, Dr. Bob. Lisa Richardson says, I agree with Yelena that mac and cheese is better with Sriracha. The scene with her and Kate was playful and very, very menacing. She's a welcome to addition to the MCU. Did you see the Kingpin silhouette looming over the Hawkeye title at the end? Oh, yes. I actually think oh, that's going to be our uh, podcast image for the week because I love it so much. Thanks, yeah. Lisa. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, Donald Dennis had this to say, damn, I have to admit to my brother he was correct about the big guy. <laughs> Otherwise, it was a great episode. Also, I'm choosing to believe the ever-changing and thickening Russian accent was to seem more intense during the interrogation and was an intentional tactic to help unsettle Bishop done by Elena. Um, could be, yeah. could be. I didn't notice it that badly. I think it, personally, I didn't see it like that. Uh, yeah, I think, I think Florence Pugh, uh, well, she's not Russian, so uh, <laughs> sure. it, it's pretty clear. Um, but yeah, she's it, not. Gets very strong at some points and no. a little weaker at other points. But again, she's a black widow. She needs to fit in a different location. So maybe she doesn't have a pristine Russian accent at all times. Maybe it's been affected by her year and a half traveling the world as well. Maybe that's it. I, yeah. I have to say, I didn't notice that either. Um, but uh, I can see that that train of thought for sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Donald. Thanks, Donald. Richard Blaze says, literally screaming at the reveal. <laughs> Mind has gone for a runaround and maybe sometime before it returns. Kale Hensley says, did anyone else 100% think that was not Vincent D'Onofrio? I freeze framed and zoomed in and was like, damn, they recast. <laughs> Kale, I am with you there. I thought it wasn't as well. When I first saw it, I 
just thought it was too fuzzy and it was being made to look like it. Mm. And then there was his name in the end credits and looked at it again in the second uh, watch. And it, yeah, it's definitely him. I I think it's the white suit as well, as much as anything, because from Marvel Netflix, he had just dark suits all the time, primarily. I think till the end, exactly. And so for some reason, that's just kind of embedded in in my mind, really, because I know the comics have him with the white suit but i just never really see that as being that iconic it's more his silhouette i i just get it it's his silhouette that i i find iconic the hulking body the the no neck you know that kind of thing um so yeah thanks so much kale and and richard i hope your mind returns soon uh thanks so much for the feedback Uh, Deanna Debrin Maskell says, I didn't think it possible, but my heart grew three sizes this episode. Take that, Mephisto and Ralph. So many theories confirmed. I really don't want to think about what this Grinch might carve on Christmas. I'm starting to think Clint might not make it home for Christmas, but at least uh, Grills will whip up something nice. Nothing better happened to that delightful man. Is there anything he can't do? There's three things he can do. There's three things. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Uh, Most certainly three things. Um, Deanna says, just keep finding more layers to Laura. And I need more. I love their marriage so much. Life goals. I cannot wait for the epic triumvirate of Kate, Maya, and Yelena. Let it bro. Let it bro. Let it bro one more (laughs) time. Excellent, Deanna. Thank you so much. And Deanna finishes with four and a half message arrows out of five. Oh, nailed it. Yes. Nailed it. Excellent, Deanna. Thanks so much for your feedback. Greg Schwalm says, that This was fantastic. The interaction between Yelena and Kate was lighthearted and heartfelt with a dark, ominous undertone and was really compelling. And I'm realizing that my favorite MCU series are the fade in, fade out of the blip. The cold open really gave me a good impression of what it was like to lose all that time in an instant and conveniently in a situation that was non-lethal and basically the easiest situation to be in and still would be mind-blowing to comprehend. But alas, I'm waxing poetic about the real emotional implications of a superhero show situation, which either shows how good the writing is or how much of a nerd I am. (laughs) <laughs> why you know, not both why not both exactly you know you say it's a convenient situation to be in but what if somebody been on the toilet or in the shower when you suddenly appeared back at the sink you disappeared from five years ago like you know it's not that convenient <laughs> it depends that is well we saw the journey basketball game <laughs> exactly exactly thanks greg thanks greg yeah thanks finally greg. thanks greg finally thanks, greg. we have <laughs> thanks greg that's greg i've got loads of things of where you could blip back to now <laughs> that would be really I outrageous know, that's what i'm trying to get finally we have a piece of feedback on facebook from claire Plain who said i would have named this episode message in an arrow i like it i like it not a bad one you could probably have the police or sting do it to the the to the theme of message in a bottle there you go there you go (laughs) love it thanks Claire James Uren also sent us an email on episode 5 he says just like a certain Mr Fisk I'm back again this week but more about that later this definitely felt like a calm before the storm type episode the standout for me was of course the apartment scene between Yelena and Kate Bishop full name please as presumably future BFFs Florence Pugh in particular seemed to be having a ball chewing some possibly reindeer flavoured scenery with her mannerisms and turns of phrase. And I have a feeling a few of those takes might have been difficult to keep a straight face in. Her character seems to have changed quite a bit post the snapping from the happy-go-lucky teenager of Black Widow to someone much more serious and even menacing at times. The other small scene I loved was the can scene with the almost Tarantino-esque conversation about famous tracksuit wearers, which felt straight out of a comic, as well as that letter trick arrow. There is still obviously a big secret yet to reveal with Laura, and like you, I had been theorising about her being someone like Mockingbird with similar thoughts on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so suspect it might just be a more minor character. Of course, I can't not mention the ending reveal, and glad that after all the build-up, this was not a double bluff. I just hope we get to see some decent screen time for Vincent D'Onofrio next week, although I have a feeling it might be more of a setup for season two. Looking forward to seeing how this all wraps up next week from James. Thanks, James. Yeah, thank you so much, James. Um, yes, 
really want screen time with Vincent mm. and the Kingpin in episode six, as I say. Kingpin for episode six. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I absolutely love your line about Florence Pugh chewing possibly reindeer flavored <laughs> season- scenery. <laughs> yes. Fantastic, James. Definitely. Love it. Love it. Thanks so much. Thanks, James. Um, we have some voicemails in for this episode. Ryan got in contact with us with his thoughts about episode five of Hawkeye. Good to hear from you, Ryan. Hey, guys. How you doing? Sorry it's been so long, but it's been a busy, busy for myself. Been watching these shows and I wanted to use you, Chris, John and Derek, if you don't mind, as a bit of a therapy session because there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about or ask your opinions on. And I know one of them is close to your hearts, guys. After last week's episode, you know, it is, and I know it hasn't been confirmed yet and it probably will be, but it might not be, but it more than likely will be. The whole issue with who is Clint's wife. Now, I'm not going to get into it, but all I'm going to say is I was as upset as you guys are when I heard all the theories of who she possibly could be with her being a possible agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. member. Now, I'm one of those people who watched all seven series of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I actually liked it. And it really did upset me at times when... They were like a big brother, little brother situation where the MCU and the movies were the big brother who never, ever mentioned or helped out the little brother or brought him along to the party or, you know, invited him out with him and his mates. And Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the TV show, was like the little brother trying to always get mentioned in the big movies. Because how many times did Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. mention stuff about what was going on in the movies? I remember when they mentioned about Agent Carter... Uh, when she passed away, they had that going on the screen in the background. You know, there's so many other things, I can't remember now, but there's so many other things through the seven series where they were constantly mentioning about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And if they do what they do and Clint's wife is who he thinks she is, then, you know, I don't know F- Kevin Falgi in Foggy We Trust, but he has made it obviously clear that he does not want Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to have anything to do with the MCU. And as someone who dedicated seven seasons to it, I'm finding it a bit upsetting, but <laughs> listen, and all, all jokes aside, it was just something I wanted to get off my chest because I know you guys have watched that and you guys are the only people I know that actually get, watched all seven series. So, you know, I heard you talking about it last week and that was my opinion. Now, with regards to this week, the show's been okay and I've enjoyed it, but this week I thought was outstanding. And the one reason I thought it was outstanding was Florence Pugh. She is an amazing actress And the scene between her and Kate Bishop in her house or in Kate's house was absolutely top notch for me. Really like her wittiness, her banter, like how quick she is. The little things like Kate Bishop, when she says her whole name, I thought it was hilarious. And even so that Kate calls her out. She she says, well, you say my whole name because you want me to know that I know. You know my whole name? She's like, yeah. I just, it was absolutely amazing. And I really do hope that they have something in the future where they can work together because I thought the chemistry between them was, like I say, top notch. I was really blown away by that. And um, I actually watched that scene again after after the episode because I just wanted to see that scene again. Really, really enjoyed it. Another thing I wanted to touch on with you guys. um, I I felt a bit of a, a moment here, guys. I had to send a message in this week because... Obviously, the big thing is we've got Kingpin. And you guys were the first show... Daredevil was the first show that I messaged in and started to interact with you guys. And that was the first show that I listened to from you guys. And I've been listening to everything you've done that I've been watching since then on. So it's just a big, massive full circle. I'm over the moon to have Vincent back in the MCU... Or, sorry, in officially in the MCU. Um, let's see what it brings. And I'm sure it will bring as goodness... No, it's not a word, sorry. I'm sure it will bring the good stuff that it brought for the Netflix series and how much we really enjoyed that. So, yeah, just for me, guys, I wanted to thank you uh, for everything you've done since then. Really enjoyed all your coverage. Wish yourselves and all our defenders, Merry Marvelites, you know, everyone who listens to this, um, a Merry Christmas. And again, thank you guys for all your hard work. Uh, Sorry for the long message, but take care. Loving the show and we'll see what happens next week with the final. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Ah, Ryan. Thank you so much for that. I'm glad that you, you, 
We are, can be your therapy session, much like this is my therapy session. When I speak to the lads and you guys, our <laughs> listeners, our fellow defenders. It does feel um, extra special, though, when something like this happens yeah. in the MCU. Yeah. When we got when we got our little defender show back. Because we have been calling ourselves defenders for five years. And all of our wonderful listeners to Defenders TV Podcast have been the defenders for five years. Yep. So, so having this moment where we see Kingpin, one of the feature characters from that show, appearing in the MCU, feels special to all of us. Yeah, as absolutely. Well. great to have listeners like Ryan have been around for, for so long listening to us ramble on about uh, about marvel um it's great to have you still on board with us too so uh, thank you very much for that um did you notice one great touch in the episode as well um he, ryan mentioned about yelena calling kate bishop kate bishop every time yeah. she talked to her did you did you, did you notice the text message started with to kate bishop and her full name yeah. on it loved it it's just <laughs> yeah. a great little touch thanks so much ryan sit back relax make yourself comfortable because Yes, if they get rid of Mockingbird that was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., mm. um, yes, well, I'll also uh, be requiring massive therapy. I, I mean, it might need to be consoling ourselves yeah. in, in a pub in London somewhere. Yeah, uh, so but We'd all have a whole session where all the defenders would get together uh, and all the fans of Agents <laughs> of S.H.I.E.L.D. would get together to commiserate about it. But I suppose the whole thing is now by bringing in Vincent D'Onofrio in here, it's kind of saying, look, that's also Marvel TV, made by the same studio that made Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We've done this now. We heard the calls to bring it and make sure it's in the MCU. I think this is just another indication that actually we may see Phil Coulson back in the MCU or some one, one character from S.H.I.E.L.D. It's all open now again, I think. I also think that hopefully Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. won't be snipped away um, by the, the larger Disney Plus because we did have Nick Fury in there. So that would question whether he was even real at all in the whole <laughs> of the MCU. Um, but then maybe they'll paper over that with uh, that he was actually a scroll. Mm, um, maybe. Damn you, Marvel, so, no. with your intricacies <laughs> and complexities. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks so much, Ryan. I don't think so. Ryan, again, I'll repeat. Hashtag... No Mockingbird. It is Laura Brown, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. It makes much more sense for the story and doesn't write away Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There we go. Yes, thank you so much, Ryan. We also have a voicemail from the one and only Steve Brown. Hey, TV Podcast Industries. This is Steve. And wow, I just finished the first listen, the first watch of Hawkeye Episode 5. And I am blown away by that last scene. I cannot wait to watch with this, this again. I cannot wait to podcast on it. I can't wait to hear you guys talk about it. I'm so excited that I just, I had to send something off with my very first reaction because, whoa. And even Vincent D'Onofrio's name in the credits there at the end. Um, I'm just blown away. I mean, we've been looking for a big reveal this whole time. We've been waiting for something conspiracy-minded to pan out. And this time it did. It's not Mephisto. It's not anybody else. It's Kingpin. Whoa. Love it, Steve. It's not Mephisto. It's not anybody else. It's Kingpin. Yes. Great little capper on the episode there. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, thank you so much, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Steve. And yeah, that's the best. That's the perfect way to end our feedback session. Absolutely. But this is not the last podcast of the week, of course. We, we will be back on Saturday with our Wheel of Time podcast, Saturday, 5 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, uh, UK time. We will be back with that episode we're talking about. Wheel of Time, episode 7, Dark Along the Ways. Or should I say, John and Chris are talking about uh, Dark Along the Ways because um, I'm unfortunately not able to join them uh, for that podcast. But what I will be able to join you all for is the Hawkeye finale next week and our Spider-Man No Way Home podcast. We are so excited to talk about that movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. I hope you've all seen it, because uh, you're going to want to join us for that podcast. Oh, yes, but please, fellow defenders, take it from a massive MCU and Spidey fan. Please make time. Be careful and safe and go to your local cinema where possible and check this out before it gets spoiled for you. Um, so, yes. yeah, do, do, do what you can to get out there. Um, it, it is worth it. As a spoiler, I liked it. Yes. <laughs> or if, if you're currently also 
um, have already started your winter hibernation of basically not leaving the house, then, um, of course, uh, you might not get spoiled as long as you destroy all um, mobile devices, I guess. Um, and don't stay off the internet. Yes, yeah, stay <laughs> off the internet. But uh, yes, yeah. definitely a recommend from moi. Right then, we're off to do Wheel of Time. We'll be back next week with Wheel of Time, Hawkeye, and Spider Man. Until that, ta ra for me. <laughs> All right, Scylla. All right, ta ra ta ra. <laughs> yep, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back again very soon to talk to you about more awesome TV. Yes, thank you so much, fellow defenders, for joining us. Defenders from right back in the day to those who've just come on board, it is always a pleasure speaking with you, discussing our favourite Marvel shows, and of course listening to your wonderful feedback and thoughts about each and every episode. Uh, We will be back with you next time. And just remember, as always, keep watching, keep listening, and of course, keep defending. Bye. Bye.